Hello everyone, Carol Griffiths here, and if I have timed this video correctly, Happy New Year! So, I have questions come to me through comments throughout the year, and I try to address them. Some of them I avoid because I don't want to answer them, um, or they're too personal, or basically they're on topics I don't feel I have the right to comment on. However, one that's crept up quite regularly is, Kerry, why do you do your art journaling privately and not on screen anymore? Um, I've always art journaled privately for a reason that's personal to me, to be honest with you. Um, I have led my life very much in front of the public. As a dancer and a performer, I was in front of thousands of people on a regular basis. Um, I do shopping channel TV, so I'm demonstrating in front of the potentially the world um when i'm at shows demonstrating lecturing i'm always i'm always on show and that really fed into my perfectionism in that when you're doing something can you know there's a television camera zoomed in on what you're working on and it's about three inches away from your piece you're constantly going, it needs to be perfect, it needs to be perfect. When you're on stage and I'm, say I was at a cake show and I'm demonstrating cake decorating skills, I can't make a mistake. Um, people put you on that pedestal and it's a case of, you have to do the best you can, you, there's no excuses. You may go, guys, I'm doing this live in front of 2,000 people and they're like, yeah, but you're Kerry Griffiths. So everything I've done creatively has always had the bar set very, very high, and I've always really, really pushed myself to be as perfect as I can. And that became a habit then, which fed into my perfectionism. And as any of you who know me, I've struggled with that. And now I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it in such a way that I'm learning to accept that perfection isn't really attainable. Excellent is. Because the moment you hit perfection, where do you go from there? Perfection is is it. So by striving to excellence, I can push past excellence to be more excellent. If that kind of makes sense, it does make. Anyway, back to the subject about the art journaling. So I learned quite a while ago that I needed private time to myself to create, to play, to explore, to screw up, to make mistakes, to do ugly stuff as well. Um, so I started out doing my art journals off screen, off video, off YouTube. Um, I think I've done one or two pages on videos. In fact, I'm darn sure I have. The trouble is that when you're constantly looking at that clock going, I've got an hour. In an hour, I've got to create a piece. Um, it's got to go right. I have to talk all the way through it. I have to come up and make decisions that quickly. That's not how I create my art journals. I have a new art journal every single year. And that's one of the reasons why this video is going out today, because I will have a new art journal for 2023. Now that art journal, I could, I could make a background on the 1st of January and not complete that spread till the 31st of December. I will pop in and out of my journal. I will very often flick through pages until I find a page that inspires me or I have an idea or I come across a piece of ephemera or I come across another artist and I go, oh, that would work perfectly for what I've done in my art journal. Um, you will also see, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick through some of my art journals with you. Um, what you're going to see is I very rarely finish a complete art journal. I usually get to the point where the end of the year comes around. I'm like, OK, I tidy up any loose ends. I call the art journal done and I move to a new art journal. And then sometimes if I'm having one of those non-creative days, which we all have, I will flip back through an old art journal and probably find a page that's not finished and go, oh, I know what that needs now. Because in the interim time, I've increased my skill set. I've moved on as an artist and different things have inspired me. I have different layers of knowledge from colour theory to collage to painting to techniques and maybe one of the pages I started two or three years ago I will come across it and it'll speak to me so I'll go back to that journal and finish that off so anyway so before I started art journaling and this was my first art journal my first official art journal I think this was 2019 bear with me just have a look 
2019-2020, there you go. That was my first art journal. Now, before that, I used to do my artwork on big sheets of paper or cardboard. And then what I would do is, when I'd finished it, I'd put it into a portfolio. And just, it would be loose leaf papers. However, what happened a lot of the time is I'd finish a piece or get to a point where I sort of thought it was finished. I'd hate it, tear it up and throw it in the bin. And that became a habit to the point that I never actually kept anything. And even when I looked back through some of my past work, my perfectionism was going, that's crap. It's just not good enough. And instead of where I am now, I would take that piece and go, okay, what, what isn't right about it? Can I take it to the next level? How can I push through? And I would have pushed through and probably saved half of them. But basically, they all went in the trash and I never kept them. However, when I started using a journal as a commitment to a journal, I don't tend to tear pages out of a journal. I'll stick pages together to thicken pages up, but I won't tear pages out. So unless I tear them out before I start the journal in the first place, because I want to reduce the strain on the spine. So we're going to have a quick flick through some of my journals. Each of them holds lessons for me. And each of them is the reason why the next journal follows on. So this was 2019, 2020. I think this was 20, this was 2020. And I think you actually saw me do this one on screen. This was 2021. This one is 2022. And this was a very, very productive year. And this one is my next art, next one. And I've already done the first page in this one because a project came up that I just so wanted to do. So I did it and I did it in here. So I will tell you what journals I use. We'll flick through all of the pictures. Now I've never kept my artwork secret. If you were to go to my Pinterest account, I think there is a board called um, Kerry's Art Journal Images. Anything in my art journals, I'm usually photographed and I put into that, that board. So know that I've not kept them secret. It's just, I think it's really important for myself and everybody who's creative to be able to have a quiet space. And I don't mean quiet as in lacking noise. I mean, a calm, safe space to actually put some music on, put an audio book on, put a sound effects on in the background of maybe a thunderstorm or the oceans, or maybe silence, just to allow yourself to explore creativity. And for me, my creativity is driven by so many different things. Emotions, the mood I'm in, um, the weather outside my window, uh, how my friends are being affected, things on the news, just anything can in, in affect me. And when I look back at my journals, a lot of the time, my art journals will tell you or tell me how I was feeling that day. And one of these journals I'm going to show you, it really dictates, I can tell just by looking at that journal, what was happening that year. So enough from me, let's put this camera up on its stand so you can look down and I will flip through all of these. I will, I'll try not to spend too long on them because again, I don't need an enormous video in front of me. Um, and I will try and give you a bit of explanation as to why I created the page and what it says, maybe what I learned from it and what I was doing differently in the next journal along. So, okay. Enough of me, let's go to the overhead and we'll start with book number one. So here we are guys at the overhead. Now before I actually start going through journals, just because I'm likely to forget, these are the journals I actually now use. Um, they're the Diane Reevely ones. I, um, I like them, the paper in them is fabulous. It's good for different mediums. I like the layout of it. I do alter it slightly, but just know it's the Diane Reevely um, creative journals that I use. Um, and I don't think I'm ever going to change that, to be honest. If I found a journal that I like, they do come in different sizes. I think they actually come in different colors as well. Like I think there's one where the interior papers are black. I always go for the ones that are either white and white and buff or just the regular buff color but I love them so there you go that's that so when I first started my first um, art journal as I said I was doing individual sheets of paper 
or card and I'd search the internet to find out what everyone was using and one of these um, what's I don't even remember the name of this book now a moleskin there you go it's a moleskin everybody said oh moleskins are great they're nice size to start with you'll do lots of work in them and I started in this and it was a bit difficult to be honest because I, I it was a step of commitment to actually put things into this because I knew I wasn't going to tear it open so tear it out so I started on well, there you go 2019 2020 first ever art journal there you go so I basically just started and worked my way through I did lots of gluing of stuff in to begin with um, I did use texture paste um, stamps and stuff like that um, I was exploring what I thought an art journal was or should be now I like the ocean I like the sea so for me that was a that was the theme I was definitely going to do um I tried different things I mean I I watched other artists I decided was what they're doing is it what I should be doing and and this journal if anything taught me that no I should be doing what I want to do I mean this sort of say a bit of a dark theme for me there um I was just working my way through and this is kind of remember this not that you've seen it before but remember this face here because this was the first indication to me about discovering a direction I wanted to go in but I was trying cutouts I was trying texture paste I was trying different things I kept I kept going back to like garden type themes I found I always like to put words or sayings into things as well but not a spectacular journal I mean things were a little quirky along the way um I don't know I can't explain some of these they just happened they just developed as I went along this page particularly I absolutely loved don't know what it was about it this this woman's face was amazing this was all stone that was in the magazine I think it might have been National Geographic and I cut those out and I, I learned that I didn't have to fill a page because if we look back at here I've got so much going on in on this page but for this one I went you know what I don't have to fill a page and it was quite difficult for me to not do more in here but I stopped again here okay I'm really going into the texture thing here I tried heat embossing I tried pastes I tried lots of stuff I tried metallics so that's where we're there um this was kind of my mood must have been quite dark then because I, I was struggling I didn't feel that I could move forward with my art I did feel like well this if I'm looking at this now I'd say this symbolizes a cage and I did feel a bit trapped and I couldn't I, I wasn't finding my way forward and at this point this well this center scene this was halfway through this journal and I was beginning to be disheartened with this journal I, I it wasn't working for me but I was trying um, back to a theme there's always flowers there's always butterflies for me this was one of those days where I just wanted to stick things onto a page and I did um, started to create backgrounds and this is one of those I never went back to but you never know I might come back one day and do something on that it's not wasted it, it gave me pleasure to create that so that's where it is again I've started this it's not finished um, I don't know where it's going I I was inspired to put those in there I obviously was in a green theme and and it didn't go anywhere but one day I may come back and there may be a green pixie will be dancing across here flying a red kite or something who knows this one I did and I actually quite liked this one um, I don't know what it was about this that worked for me but this was one of those spreads I went you know what there's something I can do this this sort of played to my quirkiness um, I like that I tried I saw someone do something like this I don't know who it was on the internet and I went I'm gonna have a go at that and I did and at the end I looked at it and went that looks like a hot mess to me and it just didn't work uh, I, I don't know maybe maybe there was a space event that that week that I've been watching and I thought well that'd be a good idea I don't know I just don't know why it looks like this um, again a face and again I was happy with this one because there wasn't a lot on there I wasn't happy the way colors leaked through 
But again, there was a face in this. Again, a bit of abstract, a face again. I was beginning to be drawn to doing faces, and I like doing the faces. Do not ask me why there's a bunch of brass doorknobs in the middle of a green jungle scene. It just, I was having a quirky day. So, again, back with the faces. This time I sort of was pushing the limit on faces and starting to decorate them and twist them up. And this was all about love letters. I was beginning to find footing for themes. Back to the ocean theme. That was a bit safe. Um, I had this as a rubber stamp and really loved the rubber stamp. So I was playing around with that idea. Um, this must have been about November time. It has to have been because this theme of the war must have been like Remembrance Sunday or something. I was doing this and it was a bit dark and maybe it was my mood on that day. And then bang, mood swing over straight back to the Caribbean. Again, the faces and bright colours, just playing with ideas. And this is what I was doing. I was trying to find my way. And then I have no idea why that's that's the inside of the back. Oh, it's not inside the back cover. That just... I don't know, maybe that was my statement about fashion. I have no idea. Maybe I've, I think I possibly found that image and then made a page to fit the image instead of the other way around. And then the back cover. So as you can see, I struggled. But what did I learn about this journal? Didn't work for me. It was too small. It was too fiddly. I, I needed to expand. I needed to have more canvas to work upon. So... Then I created one of these, an altered book. And I know there's a video of me creating this one. Um, I did it. It took some doing to do this. And I have used this, or 2020, there you go. I have created these pages in videos. Um, this, was, this was sort of a tester. I redid this page later on, but I liked that one. However, I quickly found that the amount of text on the page, all I was doing normally was trying to cover up the text first. And then I got to the point where things just kept getting really, really messy. And over time, the paper didn't actually support the colours I put on it. And it would just, as you can see, things didn't stay the way I made them. I wasn't happy with this journal at all. I didn't do a huge amount in it. Um, I was trying to do a monthly project. Um, trying to push myself into being creative. I, I did stuff, as you can see, but I wasn't happy with this journal. It just, I jumped from page to page because I thought if I work throughout the journal intermittently, then I won't put any stress on the spine. Um, but it didn't really work for me. I mean, I liked this page. This, this was sort of a hint of the style I was going to go down eventually. Um, but... I don't know. It was just, it was a, all of this was just me dipping my toe in the water of art journaling, to be honest. I think there's more in it. There is. Okay. And, and this one, this was a bit of a telltale stage for me, to be honest with you. This was 2020 and I was, I was really struggling with my emotions at this point. I mean, you know, I've had some struggles with bits of depression and I wasn't finding my way and if I was an analyst looking at this page I would say this is all about me trying to find a way to something new um, but I'm not an analyst and I just kept going I'm not sure there's any more in here to be honest there isn't so this this art journal didn't work for me it's there I might jump into it occasionally but I'm not sure it's going to be something I'm going to pop into time and time again because there's something about this book that just it just doesn't speak to me. It just it just doesn't doesn't call to me. And I need to be I need to be inspired by not only things around me, but the thing I'm working on. And this unfortunately didn't work. There's a lovely book. I, I enjoyed making it. It was an achievement. If anything, I wish I'd have not made it into an art journal. I'd actually made it into a journal journal and I probably would have used it far more. So let's go on to the next one. So this little one. I made this journal out of a recycled book, um, 2021. Okay, 
this was the journal I was I thought right I finally made a journal and I did it stitched it in made it all lovely quite like the size it was almost this size but for some reason it felt bigger I liked the paper I put into it and I started creating I mean this looks like a really positive approach to um, creating art and what I did is I created smaller pieces on individual pages so as you can see it was a combination of painting and artwork rice papers collage stuff like this i was really enjoying this book and then covid sort of took over my life and i sort of lost momentum and i think the whole world went to a dark place and and i kind of followed it i i I was stumbling. I mean, as you can see, my style had changed considerably. Not finished yet. Never found something to put there, but I will one day. Um, I was looking at different things to influence me. And I just ground to a halt, and that's as far as I got. Um, it was not a good year 2021 for any of us. Um, I had lost my way. I didn't know whether I was in the cake world whether I was in the art world, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And this journal pretty much told that tale. I will go back to this one, though, because I really do love this journal. There are some things in here that really work for me. Like there's something about this page I absolutely adore. Um, this, I love it. It's, it's absolutely so not my style, but it just it called to me. I just there are certain things about this journal I absolutely love. So this will get revisited. Then we come on to this year's journal. Right, this year's journal, as you can see, I obviously had found my mojo again. Um, I think the cover needs some work though. I was just sticking things on the cover as I went along. This one again was a bit of a journey. I decided to use one of these journals and and I was very happy I did. Now, this elastic isn't on the normal journal. The normal journal, let's see if I can reach over to the other one. This is, you know, see this hole here? There's usually elastic that comes out there that wraps around. I quite like having the elastic coming from the spine. So I punctured a hole in this and put my own elastic in there because that's just my preference. Um, also, I put corners on my art journal because my art journals do sometimes travel with me and get knocked around. So basically just throwing stuff into this journal and enjoying it more. I never got round to decorating this funnily enough and and I will in I will in this coming year. So now at this point, you've noticed that I like the ocean. I like the sea. I like blue. This to me, I hummed and hard big time about whether this needed something else I just love this this is just every time I think what would this need I can't come up with anything and I think I just absolutely love this this is this is texture paste over a collage this is some of my own freehand scribbles on there there's bits of stenciling in here but I really love that and I've just Sometimes a background is just a background and it's beautiful on its own and I do nothing more with that. Again, came in with this. I like numbers. I like letters. I like different colour schemes. So for me, this was a beautiful page. I did toy around. Does it need anything more? But no, I've learned that I can just walk away from a page. It's OK to leave it maybe unfinished, part finished. It doesn't have to be perfect. Someone who's an arts major may look at this and go, oh, you haven't got your triangles. You haven't got your balance. You haven't got things in the right color schemes. I don't care. This is for me. I enjoyed creating this. I purely went by instinct on this one. OK, this one was a bit dark and dreary. Dreary. Um, don't know what I was doing with this, to be honest. I mean, I think it all stemmed from this saying, which I think comes from something from Tim Holtz. It says, it is absolutely safe for children. I went, it's absolutely not safe for children. And I think that's what sparked this quite worrying and possibly gothic sort of spread with blood splatters. And I don't know, there's a part of me maybe I haven't yet explored yet. And maybe it's the darker side of my nature I've not come up against. Now, this page, as you will see, this 
is what the page before turned into. Let's see if I can find it. So I think it was what, there you go. So this was the original page and this is what it developed into. So what I did is I revisited an old idea and expanded it. And I like this one. I like the original as well, but I like this one probably because there's more space. There's room for the eye to rest. Um, for me, it was like, yes, the words actually mean something. My art is one of a kind. This is creative. Creativity feels like home. So for me, this worked. This really did work. Um, faces again. I don't know why I, I kept coming back to faces. This was just a cut out from a magazine. This was texture paste. This was me yet again exploring. But this time, it seems that I was finding more about colour theory. And a lot of you are really complimentary about my use of colours. I'm a great believer in the more you do, the more you learn, the easier it becomes. And I have been through quite a roller coaster of uh, styles and colours and genres and stuff. And, and this is sort of where it was coming together for me. Um, again, this must have been an absolutely fabulous day. I mean, look at the shine on that. I loved this page. This page took me about 20 minutes to do, completely from a blank background all the way through to this. Just using some stencils, an applique butterfly, power up with plants. I love plants. I've got plants in my craft room. I've got plants all around the house. I love greenery. I love my garden. It's my safe place. It's where I feel I can, I can sit down with a glass of wine, a cup of tea, a glass of water. I can sit in my garden and actually just enjoy. And this spoke to me. And, and I, I absolutely love this page. It's one of my favourites in this journal. Again, I bounced into this one. I really like orange and pink and this teal colour and it just spoke to me of I don't want to say it's northwestern art because that would be wrong to try and label it as such but what I was seeing here were things that hinted at what I might have seen in Mexico or New Mexico when I was in over there or in Texas stuff like that um just stuff why the word lost I don't know and this lady I think it's a lady climbing a mountain I don't know maybe it was symbolic of me climbing climbing out of my depths of despair and becoming more of the artist that I've become now and I love this page absolutely love this page I don't know why certain things are on this page they just they just are oh. this one again have I turned to no I haven't I have stuck some of these pages together because there was a lot of wet mediums involved and I really wanted the support. This one, I just like, it came together. To be honest with you, I had this bit of rice paper from Stamperia left over from another project and this created this page because I had this and then I hunted through my scrap box and I had this lady and it just came together. It was just bits and pieces. This was more rice paper. I just went over it with a gold pen. It, it just spoke to me. And I, I think there's a great deal to be said when you're creating privately. You can take more risks. I don't have a camera pointed at me. No one's going to judge it. I'm never going to show it to someone unless I'm happy to show it to someone. So it was, it was safe to just explore. And I'm quite pleased with that. Is it my colour scheme? No, I'm not a lover of pink. But you know what? This page worked. Okay, we're back to the sea theme. Are we seeing something here? Now, what the heck butterflies have got to do with a whale in the ocean? I don't know. But I think I was playing with the colours. This is a collage that has several layers of rice paper and acrylic paints. This was me just thinking about saving the world. And I love this. Absa, absa, absolutely adore this page. Um... I do, the one thing I don't like about journal is they have a seam down the middle because if I'd have done this on a canvas, this would be on my wall at the moment. I absolutely adore this. Now the next page was a little bit upsetting to me and I'm gonna say it before I show it. Um, as you've seen throughout my journal so far, I'm quite fixated about using faces. Um, they are female faces so far, but I will be doing male faces as well. Um, and I like I like a face 
to be able to adjust it or add stuff to it and I used it more and more and more but I've always wanted to be able to draw faces and not been able to achieve it and it's always been on my bucket list to learn how to draw faces so I probably took about six weeks of studying videos studying art books I watched um, an artist out there called Karen Campbell who has has wonderful fantasy type faces um, I, I watched several art programs I bought a few books on how to work the proportions and I started working on faces my own. And the next page is my first attempt at drawing and painting a face. I loved it so much that I made a huge error. When I'd finished it, another artist said, oh, to preserve it, you should actually brush it over with um, an acrylic varnish. That's something I hadn't done up until then. And it was a mistake because what happened? The pages stuck together and where they stuck they ripped pieces off i've tried to repair it but it's the only saving grace is i photographed it before i closed the book and i love this but this was my first attempt at at a face i loved it and i intend doing more of them and that's pretty much going to be my theme for my next journal the 2023 one is I'm going to do faces. I'm going to do male. I'm going to do female. I'm going to explore the human features. Then I hope to go into like mythical creatures and fantasy creatures, all based on heads and faces. So for me, that's that. I've learned that this is a direction that I want to go in. But again, we've got layers and layers and layers. Now, sometimes I create a background. And if I lift this up, you'll see why I love this. It's metallic. Sometimes I create a background and I don't think it needs anything else. This was created with layers of masking tape, strips of them, and then it was just using a credit card and a brayer and putting layers of acrylic paint on. And I love that. I cannot think of anything I would put on that. I can look at that and it brings me great joy. Okay, I was exploring. I wanted to explore the concept of camouflage. I had this image and I wanted to play with it. And I was like, it's amazing to me how nature, let's take this one out of here, nature naturally learns to camouflage itself, to protect itself. However, the human beings haven't yet learned about camouflage. Even though this little girl is wearing the same colors behind her, just being as she is, is drawing all of the attention. So everything I create does have a story. Sometimes it is a bit of a bizarre story, but they do have a story. Okay, this one, not 100%. I keep going back to this almost Japanese, Chinese sort of oriental theme and stuff I do. I like to line things up in boxes and grids. This has become apparent to me over the time. Um, this was an index card that I made that this instigated the whole page because it was from here I started and then I created the background to complement this piece. Okay, what's next? Okay, me in a whimsical moment. I created this page and I just, it was just fun. I'd had this puppy image for so long and just didn't know what to do with it. And then I came across this Stand Tall. I found this in a magazine and then these were just off cuts of some of my jelly prints. And then I found this little tiny silhouette of a man. <laughs> I sound like Queen the Band, don't I? And I put him in and then about a month ago, I received my stencil, which was Fly Away Home, and that's that's part of a stencil. It's a lot longer than that. And I just felt that the birds just finished this page off. So again, I'd done the page, but when this stencil arrived, I came back because I knew this page existed, and I wanted to put those into the sky, and the cl clouds were actually made with it as well. So there you go. So things just... A journal is never finished for me. It's something I always keep revisiting. So here again, I, I'd learnt my lesson. I created another face, so much happier with this one. So let's see if I find the previous one. Where are you gone, lady? So as you can see, this one was the first one and this was the second one. They're similar, I absolutely agree, but I got the coloration right. I love the hair in this one. I just, I, I learnt that I could pull elements out of this image to create the rest of the page. It just worked for me. And I'm so happy. This is the new direction for me. 
definitely. Um, okay, still exploring. Um, again, there's that grid thing I've got. It's all for me. It's all about lining stuff up. It. I say it's my OCD. Maybe it's just my nature that I like to line things up. I like horizontal. I like vertical. Um, this for me was very, very important. You don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And that was something that occurs a lot in my life is I have to remember you don't have to be perfect. Perfect can be boring. Something that's not perfect is interesting. So I, I really tried to keep that in my mind as I created. Again, this is texture paste. I think this is inks. This is acrylics. This is me with a pen doodling. I mean, I'm not someone who normally doodles. I thought I've got to learn to doodle. So I was brave, I picked up the pen and did it. This image of a sunflower is actually a napkin and I actually glued the napkin onto a piece of card, then cut the card up, outlined them all in black and then stuck them down. And I can tell you that took some doing and it slightly annoys me that that square isn't exactly where it should be, but you know what? I knew by this point that if I tried peeling that off and redoing it, I would ruin the whole page. So you know what? I'm okay with that not being okay. Right, where are we up to? Um, again, as you're seeing, butterflies are quite big, plants are quite big. There's another face in there. I like I like putting faces into stuff. These are just big, big flowers I cut out from a magazine. Um, I want to say that's probably a parchment paper. This is one of my stencils. I put detail in the back. I think that might be a washi tape. And the word butterflies, I like words. I, I like I like using words in my art. Now this one, I only completed this one probably about a week ago. And this was my third attempt at a face. And I thought I really do need to do a side view or a profile shot. And it just, it worked. I mean, there's several layers of paint on that face because I can tell you, I struggle to get the shading, but you know, that's a journey I'm on. Um, why is she wearing a headband? And some of the people have actually asked me, is it Wonder Woman? It's because I made a mistake underneath. I thought she'd have a center parting and then the hair would blow over the top. And when I drew it and started to paint it in, it just didn't look right. And then I realized that if she was in the wind, there would be no parting. It would just blow straight back. So I had to cover up the parting. So I gave her one of those. So now she's one of the goddesses. She's a Celtic goddess, one of the ancestors of the Welsh race or Irish race or Scottish race, whatever you wish it to be. So and again, I used in stencils. I used some of my own stencils in this, but I'm very happy with this. And again, that's going to be something going forward again. This one not finished yet. Um, it was something I really fancied doing. I masked off, well, I created my background. I masked off all of the squares with washi tape. And then I went in and did sponging techniques and stamping techniques. I used found objects. The one thing I wish I had done is I wish I'd have centered the whole grid before I put it down. But I didn't think, and I started that way and started that way. And I thought, oh, I'm only going to be able to have half squares. So I'm not sure. Something else may go on this page one day. I don't know what it could be. It might be words. It might be something. Else. I don't know. But this one's unfinished. And I'm okay with that. Now, this one I created a long time ago when I first got this journal. And I think I made a video of this because this was my... I did a five item swap with my friend Gail Augustinelli and Gail sent me stuff and I sent her stuff and we used it to create art journal pages and this was my art journal page. I have a little hidden pocket in it on there are all the details for me about why I did it, when I did it, how I did it. It's all there. So this for me is a very fond memory of my friend Gail. And we are still really thick as thieves, uh, very close friends. Um, I've never actually met Gail, but we will meet one day. But we do do video conferencing and we do do chats and private messaging. And Gail to me was a big inspiration about sharing my art with people and actually being brave and taking on an Etsy store and really focusing on my art and creativity in a video format. Um, so I will always be grateful to Gail, not only for the inspiration, but 
just for being my friend because she's a good egg. So I love that one, by the way. Absolutely love that one. This one, it was one. Have I got two? No, I've got one. This really bright. I like mushrooms. I hand painted this a long time ago. It was um, a stamped image onto tissue paper stuck to a book page. And then I painted it in with um, watercolours and acrylics. This was actually a promotional card that came from um, a company here in Wales. I must say it's called Visual Image. I'm absolutely certain it's called Visual Image. And they produced that rubber stamp or those stamps to make that. And I love the postcard so much that I kept it. Again, that's a bit of napkin, a um, bit of stenciling, background tissues. This is from the Edith Holden book. Um, I'll hold it up so you can read it if you need, would like to read it. It just seemed to fit in perfectly with this whole page and the page needed something. Now, it could be at some point this page gets some more attention because to me there could easily be a little fairy sitting here, maybe fishing or something, or maybe there'll be a caterpillar, a bit Alice in Wonderland there. I don't know. This page doesn't feel completed to me. Now, this one, I hummed and hard for a very long time as to how to finish this. I created this background quite a while ago and I played around with different ideas. And this morning I was actually going through stuff and I came across this image because I've got a folder of images of Queen Elizabeth II because I admire the woman. I absolutely, I, I like the dedication and everything and the strength that this woman has shown over the years. And when she passed this year, um, I wanted to create something as almost a marker of that event. And I hadn't done it. And I would planned other things for this page. But then I thought, you know what? It just happened. And I opened the book and went, you know, this is the right page for this. So this one was only completed about two hours ago. Um, the background was completed several months ago, but this worked and it was just, you know, it's a clean, simple homage to Queen Elizabeth II and you're sorely missed, my lady. So there you go. Now, this one, this was meant to be a background for something else. This is just different washi stuck in stripes onto a page. It's one of those backgrounds. I'm not going to do anything else, too. I can look at this and it brings me absolute joy absolutely love this what would i put on here there's just nothing i can think of that i would add to this that would actually enhance it to me it's finished and it's gonna stay that way this one i was toying with the idea of lost in translation that how things can be misinterpreted like i went to the extremes I did the English language, I did the Oriental language because they're so not recognisable, even though that's not, that's a Semic writing by PM Artist Studio. Um, it represented a different culture entirely and it's like Chinese whispers. If I say something, by the time it goes through translation to here, it can mean something completely different. It could be said in this language, translated through to English and be misinterpreted. And a lot of the times I have fallen foul of that when it comes to an email or a comment it's been written in a different language i've done a google translate google translate has translated it slightly incorrectly um and i've answered it incorrectly or i've become offended by the comment and i've gone back and then trans it's so lost in translation was what this page is about not sure it's 100 percent finished but it's pretty darn close to it and again there's a face in it there you go this one I created this. I have no idea where it's going. It's it's not finished yet. This was um, a fabric tablecloth that was a disposable tablecloth. This was some napkin. I went in with my brayer and brayed on some white to give it a washed out effect. Not truly understanding what this will become. It will one day. It'll be one of those pages I go back to. Again, we're back to the Oriental theme. Um, I had these little postcards many, 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 many years ago. I want to say, oh, 1990, I think it was. I was working in Tokyo as a performer. And I remember I had these, these greetings cards when I was over there. And I kept them and kept them and kept them and never done anything with them. 
And one day I pulled them out and I went, you know what? Why am I hoarding these? Why aren't I using these? And this is what I made with them. I sat down and I would say this page probably took me about half an hour. It just, it came together. It felt right. It doesn't need anything else. It just, to me, this is just beautiful. And I love it. Okay. Um, this is the back. This is the last page. Um, I don't know. It's a bit busy, isn't it? But to be honest with you, it has a bit, a bit of shine and a bit of sheen to it. I like it. It's, I mean, the joy of the empty nest, free your imagination. I just went for this. Now, there are influences here. I like the busy background. I had this side pretty much done and this element wasn't on here. But then when I was watching Froyle Davies, a New Zealand artist, um, ooh, quite a while ago, um, she was fixated with using circles. And this happened to be in an order that was sent to me by PM Artist Studio, who I designed for. And this was a perfect, an imperfectly perfect offcut of one of their circle um, masks. And I had a couple of them. I went, you know what? I'm just going to colour this up and stick it on because I've had the feather for probably two years. It was a feather I found in my garden. I actually put layers and layers of matte medium onto it. I then painted it. Um, I painted it white and then put metallic on the top. It just, it again, it was sitting on my shelf and I didn't know what to do with it. And one day, all of the ideas just came together and, and hence this page was created. So that was quite a chunky one. That was 2022. And we're at the present day. Okay. Today, I believe, is the 1st of January. If it isn't 1st of January, it means I've messed up. But this should be the 1st of January. This is my new journal. Um, as you can see, I've punched a hole here. And what I've done is I've put this elastic through and tied it in a knot here. Um, that's, that's how I like to do my closures on here. And I've decided that this book is going to be dedicated to abstract and mainly features, faces, heads, both fantasy and not fantasy. And I have seen Patricia and Mariah from PM Artist Studio were doing something called Doodle Bomb, which is where they take an image of themselves usually um, they print it on the laser jet printer and then they go into it and they'll enhance it and adorn it and make it a unique image. And I don't have a laser printer. So I thought, right, I'm going to do it with a magazine image. And this is what I created. And I absolutely adore this. So this is um, a head and shoulders image of a girl from a magazine. I want to say it's probably... Yeah, it must have been a fashion magazine. And then all I've done is I've cut the top of her hair off and I freehand drew the jester's hat. That's my hopeless harlequin in the background. I, I just went to town on this. I doodled. This took me, ooh, I want to say probably two, possibly three days of just solidly working on this and playing with ideas until I got to where I am. And this is the first image in my new art journal. And as you can see, completely naked art journal. And maybe December 31st, 2023, 2023, I can't speak anymore. Um, we may take a look through this and see what I actually achieved because I think I've now found my direction. I like faces. I like bright colours. I like word. I don't have to use a double spread. In fact, a lot of the time I may only do single single images and leave this one spare. I'm very tempted to leave this as an image and maybe find something that's written, maybe a poem or a saying or a phrase or even a piece of music that inspires me to think about this. I'm thinking about using that theme. So, leaving you with that image... Um, that was my journey in art journaling, to be honest with you. Um, I hope that answers a lot of the questions. I create privately because it gives me freedom from judgment. It allows me to explore. It allows me to screw up and make mistakes. It allows me to play. It allows me to not push myself to perfectionism because I think that the audience is watching or a camera is focused on me. So... 
Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully along the way, maybe it sparked some ideas with you. Maybe it's it'll help you go, you know, it's all right. You can change your mind. You can walk away from an art journal and leave blank pages. You can leave things undone. Come back to them later when the muse takes you. You don't have to complete an entire page in one sitting. Build. I may come through here. I might create 20 or 30 backgrounds in here. And then as the time comes by, I'll go back and look at the background and go, what shall I create into it? So all I can say, guys, is really just enjoy. Enjoy your artwork. Enjoy the process. It doesn't matter what the end things look like. I'm proud of this. I can look at this. And if I was really critical, there are mistakes in here. But you know what? The things I learned about myself and my creativity and my joy in using colour and form, this was worth it. And I, I love the journey and I love that you guys out there have been patient with me. And I love just from the comments I get from Pinterest and private messages. Thank you. I'm really enjoying my artwork and I hope everyone has the opportunity to create. And we're our own worst critics, guys. Forget it. Just have fun with the journey. Explore. Only through doing that will you actually become a better artist. And the more experimental person you are, the more rewards you will get it because you're not copying someone else. You're doing your thing in your way. So have a good one, guys. Let's hope 2023 is a fabulous year. Bye-bye.